Oh yes, I made it. I managed to increase my FTP by 40 watts and reach 400 watts plus 403 my latest FTP test. But more interestingly, I managed to do that without changing my training routine at all. I did change a bunch of things. I really just set out a year ago to see how many parameters I could play around with with a scientifically based approach in order to become a better athlete. Now, personally, my name is Victor Hallthorpe. I'm an Olympic two-time Olympian speed skater from Denmark, but I also do make a lot of YouTube videos and I also have a bachelor degree as a nutritionist or dietitian. So try to combine all of that knowledge and see what could I do in order to reach a 400 watts plus FCP on the bike in just one year, starting at 364. Now I'm 30 years old. I've been a professional athlete for 12 years, more than a decade. That hurts to say out loud. That also means that I don't just get these gains for free. So it was a pretty wild challenge for me to try and see if I could find those watts through nutrition and all kinds of small improvements in my everyday life. Pretty stoked about it. And I'm also pretty excited to share all of it with you guys in this video. Now there's gonna be a bunch of different projects or products or whatever scientific reports that I'm gonna mention in this video. And I am going to leave links to all of that below here. Some of them may contain some discount codes. Nobody's paid me to make this video, but if you wanna try some of those products that I mentioned out, I did reach out to the people that make them and ask, yo, can you help me out? And can you help my subscribers get a head start with the Let's just dive straight into it. The first thing that I changed was using creatine. I've always used creatine, even though I'm an endurance athlete, I skate five and 10 kilometers primarily. I've always used creatine in the off season, the preseason, simply just to get more out of my weightlifting. But then I offloaded that for periods at the time. And I also, especially going into the racing season, because for me, I do, you know, as most people that respond to creatine, I do load more water and I gain about two kilos as I'm using the creatine. However, this time around, I did not change that. I kept using creatine, six grams. That's what the recommendations would say for my body weight, about 82 kilos. I did use that all the month, all the year, and I just saw a gradual increase. My max squats have gone from 145 to 160 kilos, and my clean PB went from 95 to 104 kilograms. And I believe that comes from changing creatine. As I said, I didn't change anything when it came to my training schedule. So continuous use of creatine. There's more and more evidence that you don't need to cycle that. And even if you look at those you know, two kilos of body weight that I gained and maintained, um, I did lose overall body weight, but obviously you would think that the creatine. So during these, I mean, 365 days of increasing my FTP, I actually went from 84.8 to 82.6. But if it wasn't for the creatine, I assume it would be a lot lighter. But even with that change of body weight or increase due to the creatine, I still believe that I gained more than I lost using it, especially when you're trying to peak in the sport where you're not actually going uphill, such as cycling. So now that we're talking about creatine, I do want to point out the brand that I've been using. It's called Vanguard. And the reason I like this is because it's 100% pure. One of the issues with creatine is a lot of brands like to add that together with a lot of other things in say your pre-workout and what's not. Uh, scientifically, it is a thing you gotta take over time to get the full benefit. So I recommend you getting this one. I'll leave a link below for it. Vanguard, it is pretty awesome. It's just pure monohydrate creatine and it works. So yeah, go safe and be smart. Now, next thing I did was to track my HRV. Not just track it, I also changed and adapted my training days to it. Like I started saying I didn't change my training overall, but whenever my HRV, I track it with the ultra human ring here, whenever it was lower than 50 HRV or 50, then I would either decrease my training load or skip a workout simply just to avoid being sick or take myself too deep. So that was the thing I was very, very disciplined about to get away with my coach. We looked at that every single morning for this entire year. I also have been super disciplined with staying in my correct and intended workout zones. So 
unlike you know being younger and more playful whenever i was out biking and there was a city sign we would go for a sprint there when it was uphill or got too warm i would get out of my zone two aerobic training zones and go a little deeper which just created more fatigue and it also prevented me from fully reaching my zone four and five on the harder training days so this time around i have just spent a ton of time in the designated zones and nothing outside those. I do believe that gave me more quality and also better recovery. Now one supplement that I started taking a year ago that for sure has made a huge impact is Ketone IQ. Now I am sponsored by Ketone IQ, but I only actually contacted them and asked if they wanted to work together after testing them for a whole month where periodically I did the same as I'd done the month before, but with the ketones, seeing a 19 wattage increase in aerobic workouts and 6% in my threshold or FTP values by changing absolutely nothing but using the ketones. So this is one thing, I mean, I know from all my teammates, all my colleagues and other national teams, they all more or less use ketones right now. So it's no secret anymore. There's a reason all the tour riders are on it, but that, is definitely something I changed in that period. And I think it helps me just as much with recovery as it does with the actual sparing your glycogen and using ketones instead as a fuel. So that's definitely something that had a massive impact on my FTP. Now this little thing you can see on my nose here is one of many things I started using that has managed or allowed me to get more deep sleep and higher sleep quality. You know, I track this guy here, especially for snoring. I now snore 4% of the night, whereas without this, I would snore 34% of the night. So also made my wife a lot happier. But to be honest, or to be a little more serious here, this made a big difference. I increased my deep sleep by more than half an hour in average. And one cool thing, obviously it's not only thanks to the nasal band here, but I did increase my average HRV looking at the previous four months last year by 25 which is unreal when it went from 60 to 85 for an average doing the same workout so this thing is definitely one that helps you relax more overnight helps me relax more overnight i use the band called intake breathing um, simply because it works better than the rest it's in incredibly solid and strong and you attach magnets to your nose and then you clip this on any size that fits you and I have not had any experiences with it falling off, at least not the first three days of use of these small magnetic strips, and then you simply just change those. In terms of sleeping, I use the thing called NeuroVisor now. Now, before bed, it helps me fall asleep faster. It's light and sound waves that relaxes my mind, and then I fall asleep much faster. So my sleep latency has gone down by more than 10 minutes on average comparing this to the previous year. And also I have decreased my sleeping temperature going from, we're training in the US, so I don't know what this corresponds to in Celsius, but from 71 Fahrenheit to 66 Fahrenheit. Quite a large difference there. But even though it feels a little cold under the quilt, my body sleeps better at colder temperatures. And I do believe this to be the same for most people. Now, when we look at specific biking things to improve my FTP, I, I moved my saddle forward and I did the same or the opposite with my cleats on the bike shoes and moved them backwards. That allowed for a more direct vertical power transfer, which I mean, you can try and do a jump. The best way to jump straight up in the air is to not move anything backwards or forward and stand on a flat surface and have that right under your center of gravity. So this is something I believe also gave me some free watts. And then finally, the last thing is heat training. I have been heat training. I use a, a device called Core. You've probably seen that from Pogachar or Vinegar or a lot of pretty solid Norwegian triathletes. It's, it's getting more and more popular. Heat training is a thing that I believe to be very, very beneficial, even if you're not uh, racing in heat or high temperatures simply just because you can increase your plasma volume blood volume and ultimately blood red blood cells which i think we all can agree leads to better performance so this is something i've done for a while now did it for three months leading up to my post ftp test that turned out to be very successful 
And um, that is something I definitely believe in and I think that contributed to the better results. Now, hopefully this is not where I plateau. There's still a year, a little more than a year till the next Olympic games where I hope to improve on my previous fifth place simply by increasing all these things, staying disciplined and doing my absolute best at training. I would love to hear from you guys. What do you think if you've experienced with any of these small hacks or training improvements? And I would also love to hear you if you have any input on things I and the rest of the community out there could try out that worked for you. If not, I appreciate your time and obviously I invite you to try some of these things out. They work for me. There's a good chance they'll work for you as well. There'll be links with some discounts below. And if not, well, I hope to see you for the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Victor and I appreciate your time.